Prednisone or any other form of corticosteroid could be a lifesaver for many of you who are dealing with autoimmune conditions including rheumatoid arthritis. But it could be a silent killer if you don't adequately use the medication. Today I'll go over a little more detail on what is steroid or corticosteroids, how to effectively use them and what are the side effects we need to watch out and how to minimize those side effects. Hi, this is Dr. Nata Subedi, your rheumatoid arthritis coach at The Room Doc, as well as a practicing rheumatologist here at Empower Arthritis and Rheumatology Center in Cary, North Carolina. Now, let's start with the basics. Let's first understand what is a steroid or what is prednisone. Many of you might have heard about cortisol, which is a natural hormone that our body typically makes to help function our body. Now, that cortisol, if it is in the synthetic form, we call that corticosteroids. So basically you can think of prednisone or other corticosteroid as a synthetic form of cortisol and the cortisol is a vital hormone in our body it's important in maintaining a lot of our daily functions such as maintaining blood pressure maintaining electrolytes in your body and also a lot of other daily cellular functions hence cortisol is an important part of the hormone in our body now it also has some important immune function that is how we use the prednisone so the prednisone is a synthetic form of cortisol that is typically used to control inflammation. Now, if you could remember, many of our autoimmune disease, the primary problem is active or hyperactive immune system that is causing inflammation and damage to different organs. Now, depending on the disease, it could be rheumatoid arthritis where the damage is in the joint. If it is lupus, the damage is in other organs such as skin, the lungs, and even the kidneys. So by using those synthetic cortisol in the form of prednisone or methylprednisolone, we can calm down the hyperactive immune system. That's how typically this corticosteroid function by decreasing or suppressing your immune system. And the good part about prednisone is highly effective and highly potent medication. It can help calm down the inflammation very fast. And the advantage is it can minimize damage to your organs. In particular, in the early phases of your disease where there is severe inflammation which can potentially lead to damage to the organs. So by using steroid, we can quickly calm down the immune system so that the immune system does not attack and damage your organs. So it has very important role. And sometimes it could be a lifesaver medication for some of those severe autoimmune diseases such as kidney lupus or vasculitis which is a very severe form of autoimmune disease where your immune system attack your lungs causing breathing problem, low oxygen level. So for those cases, prednisone is a lifesaver drug. Now as I discussed in the beginning, it is a lifesaver drug but if not adequately used or monitor, it can be a silent killer. Particularly long-term use of medication like prednisone or any other form of steroid can have detrimental effect to your health causing a lot of problems and that is what I'll be talking next is what are those side effects we need to watch out for. Now as we discuss the synthetic form of cortisol the prednisone has multiple functions in our body and likewise it has also multiple side effects throughout our body. So I'll try to organize them into different organ system and the first being your overall weight. So the prednisone or any other form of corticosteroids are known to cause weight gain and basically by two mechanisms. One is fluid retention and other one is extra weight gain. Now in case of fluid retention, the prednisone or any other form of steroid cause fluid retention through your kidneys. So you will have extra weight due to fluids. Now this is easy to manage. When you try to come off of the steroid, slowly you will be able to lose that weight. But the other side, the extra weight gain that you will get, it will take some time. Hence, you need to be mindful of things that you need to do while you are taking the prednisone. So to minimize this side effect of extra weight, just be careful of 
how much salt you are taking as you know if you take excess salt salt usually comes with water and that cause fluid retention in your body causing excessive weight gain now the other side the excessive weight that you will gain is due to consumption of extra carbohydrate or sugar now unfortunately prednisone or any other form of steroid do increase your appetite particularly for high sugary diet such as chocolates ice cream and others so you need to be very very mindful of what you are eating when you are taking prednisone or any other forms of steroid so always watch out what you are eating when you are taking prednisone that can help you minimize weight gain and also help you lose weight if you have already gained a lot of weight due to long-term use of prednisone and in more extreme cases of excessive long-term use of prednisone some of my patients do also feel like they have gained excess weight in different areas we call that cushingoid appearance where you get buffalo hump where you get a lot of fat Fat redistribution particularly in the central part of your body in your neck area in your chest area where you get excess fat deposition and we call that cushingoid feature but this is typically more common if you are taking prednisone particularly higher doses for long period of time hence we always encourage all of our patients to minimize steroid as much as possible but be careful before you make any changes with your prednisone dose always consult with your rheumatologist now other strategy that can also help you minimize your weight is exercise exercise help you maintain good weight and also help you lose some of your weight but be careful not to do excessive exercise such as going for a marathon so you should not be going for a marathon when you are taking prednisone so always do gentle exercises that can help you maintain your weight and also help you lose weight now the next most important one and common side effect is mood changes and sleep problem typically if you have underlying problem with sleep it can make it worse if you have underlying anxiety or depression it can also make it worse so you have to be mindful of these side effects now there are some strategies that can help you minimize the sleep problem with prednisone and these are some of the strategy and number one being take your prednisone in the morning now normally our body do make cortisol typically with the peak in the early morning so when you take prednisone at the same time when you have peak cortisol level it has less chances of having that side effect so always take your prednisone in the morning with your breakfast and also watch out for other things that you are taking that can cause your insomnia or sleep problem worse such as excessive caffeine and excessive use of alcohol so always try to minimize our best to avoid alcohol when you are taking prednisone this can minimize your problem with the sleep and also the anxiety and depression and sometimes prednisone can worsen your stress so always try to minimize any stressful situation when you are taking prednisone so managing your stress can also help you minimize the excess stress that could come with prednisone now the third most important side effect we need to watch out is the weakness in the bones and in more severe cases it can even cause osteoporosis and osteonecrosis which is basically death of the bones which is very severe form of side effect due to prednisone and there are some of the strategies that can help you minimize these bone related side effects this includes taking adequate calcium and vitamin d supplements also regular exercise also help you strengthen your bones and when you are taking calcium or vitamin d you can also add supplemental k2 which can help absorb the calcium and vitamin d effectively into your body now the fourth and all other key side effects to monitor and watch out is increased risk of infection as we discussed in the beginning prednisone or any other form of steroids are immunosuppressive medication and they could increase your risk of infection so we need to be very mindful of what we can do to minimize the risk of infection side effects and some of the important one being the regular hygiene like regular washing of your hand that can minimize your risk of infection adequate vaccination is also important but be careful of when you will get your vaccine if you take the vaccine when you are on high dose of prednisone they may not be as effective so the best time to take your vaccine is when you are on a lower dose and typically if you are on less than 20 milligram of prednisone is the best time to take your vaccines and all the important point is avoid live vaccines such as the flu mist which is a flu vaccine given by a spray into your nose it is better to avoid that as it can activate the flu infection if you 
you are taking higher dose of the steroids the mmr is other vaccine which is live you need to avoid while you are taking prednisone and consult with your doctor regarding other vaccine that you need to avoid while you are taking prednisone or any other form of corticosteroids now the other and the fifth side effect we need to watch out is gut health corticosteroids also are known to cause gastritis in particular if you are taking other medication that can also cause gastritis such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication so this medication when combined together can increase your risk of having gastritis so always consult with your doctor so that you minimize the gastritis risk now you can also do some strategy on how to minimize gastritis such as taking corticosteroid with meal and you can also add some anti-acid medication always check with your doctor which strategy works best for you based on your other health issues and your other medications but it is best to avoid the combination of corticosteroid or prednisone with NSAIDs to minimize your risk of gastritis that sometimes come with the prednisone use now let me also list some of the other side effects that includes increased blood sugar if you have underlying diabetes your risk of high blood sugar is much much higher so if you are on steroid always consult with your primary care doctor on how you best manage your blood sugar and then make some strategy on how you can manage your diabetes if you have it and there are a few other eye related side effects that are also not uncommon with the steroid use including early cataract and even worsening of your glaucoma which is high blood pressure in your eye so if you have those two conditions always check with your eye doctor what are the best strategy to minimize these side effects and how to best handle them now let's go to one of the most important concept in the use of prednisone and the strategy of how to safely come off of these corticosteroids and what is the safe strategy to do it now it depends on what type of disease you have and what is the reason you are taking the corticosteroid or prednisone always check with your rheumatologist what the expected duration of the prednisone use so that they can help you and create your expectations and also a timeline on when you can safely come off of the prednisone for example if you are taking steroid for rheumatoid arthritis you can safely come up much quicker on the other side if you are taking the corticosteroid for other more severe diseases such as lupus in the kidney vasculitis or polymyalgia rheumatica you might need a longer course of the prednisone hence it's always good to ask your rheumatologist what is the safe strategy what is the strategy on how we can come off of the prednisone so that you don't come off it cold turkey because if you do that it could be life-threatening now if you are on prednisone for a long period of time and we typically define the long period meaning more than two weeks you need to have a strategy on safely come up slowly otherwise you will get into what we call adrenal insufficiency which is basically your adrenal gland which make cortisol also shut down and you may not have enough cortisol to maintain your bodily function and sometimes that can lead to severe side effects such as low blood pressure and even shock which is your body may not be able to maintain blood pressure so it could be a severe side effects hence it's very important to consult with your doctor on what is the best way of coming off of the prednisone if you are taking for a long period of time now in general if you are taking prednisone for less than two weeks you can come off quicker but if you are taking for more than two weeks period your doctor will help you to slowly come off of prednisone but always consult with them so that you can make a good strategy without causing the adrenal insufficiency side effects when you come off cold turkey now when you are coming off of the steroids some of our patients do feel some side effects particularly worsening fatigue which is likely due to your body getting used to, to the prednisone for a long period of time but the good news is overall you will slowly start feeling better but as you are coming off of the prednisone you are still having a lot of the fatigue symptom that is getting worse your blood pressure is going down and you're having a lot of all the problems always let your doctor know immediately so that they can assess whether you have low cortisol level or adrenal insufficiency which need to be corrected with taking supplement corticosteroids now let me conclude on what we talked today we talk about what is prednisone which is a powerful anti-inflammatory immunosuppressive medication which is a synthetic form of cortisol it is typically used in multiple autoimmune conditions including rheumatoid arthritis and your rheumatologist will help you guide what is the right dose and what is the right length of use of prednisone 
depending on your disease. So they will help you also guide on setting the right expectation and planning on when you can come off of the steroid. And we also talked about some of the side effects of the prednisone, including bone health issues, blood pressure issues, blood sugar issues, mental issues, the sleep problem, and many other side effects. But with the right strategies, we can minimize those side effects. And with the right strategy, you can slowly and safely come off of the steroid. Ideally, most of our autoimmune diseases we can manage without prolonged use of steroid or any other form of corticosteroids. Now what other question you might have related with steroid? Please put them in the comment below. I'll try my best to help you learn about those questions and also give us some feedback. What other type of topics you want to learn on rheumatoid arthritis and other form of different inflammatory arthritis conditions. Thank you so much for your time. We are here to support you in your fight against all of these autoimmune conditions including rheumatoid arthritis and subscribe us so that you will keep up with the content that we are making every week. Thank Thank you again. This is Dr. Subedi, a practicing rheumatologist here at Empower Arthritis and Rheumatology Centers and your rheumatoid arthritis coach at Room Doc. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.